Okay, previously as part of our grand saga to calculate the definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of powers of the natural log of cosine of x, we left out a small detail, and that detail was that if you take the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the n minus first harmonic number over n squared, you get the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3. So this video, I want to plug that hole in our argument, and I want to do that first by uh, calculating some companion results that will build up towards this. So uh, maybe let's just first recall that the, har the nth harmonic number is given by the sum um, K, well, maybe we'll use M equals 1 to N of uh, 1 over M. But notice I can take out the first N minus 1 terms from this sum. That'll give me the sum M equals 1 to N minus 1 of 1 over M plus the nth term. But notice that gives me this nice recursion. This is uh, H sub N minus 1 plus 1 over N. Okay, great. So, but uh, notice that that means our goal sum over here, n equals 1 to infinity of h n minus 1 over n squared, can be written as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, but I'm going to replace h n minus 1, sorry, yeah, h n minus 1 with h n minus 1 over n. So let's do that hn minus 1 over n. Now I'll split this into two sums. So notice that's going to be the sum n equals 1 to infinity of hn over n squared minus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. Which tells us that we have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of this n minus first harmonic number over n squared is going to be the same thing as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the nth harmonic number over n squared minus that sum over there which is exactly the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3. So uh, what that means is that in order to find this left-hand sum, which is our goal, which is supposed to be the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3, we need to calculate um, this sum, which is the nth harmonic number over n squared, and then subtract Riemann zeta function over 3. We'll notice by some easy kind of algebra, that means that this value should be... Uh, 2 times the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3. And that's in fact what we'll show for the rest of the video. We will show um, this box right here that this is actually equal to twice the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3, which will plug this hole in our previous video. All right, I'll clean up the board and then we will get to this result. I've used some different indexing, but it's the same question. We want to look at the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of hm over m squared. And remember, from the previous board, our goal is that this should be twice the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3. So uh, let's go ahead and use the definition of the mth harmonic number to rewrite this. So this is going to be equal to the sum m equals 1 to infinity of um, the sum n equals 1 to m of 1 over m squared times n. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is reorder this summation. So notice we have the following inequalities on the bounds of summation. So 1 is less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to m, and then m is trending all the way to infinity. So that means that we can change the order of summation if we take this to be the sum n equals 1 to infinity and the sum m equals n n to infinity because notice m is always bigger than or equal to n and now we have the same thing inside the summation so m squared n 
Now the next thing that I want to do is take this inner sum and take the very first term out of it. So that's going to give me this. So this will be the sum n equals 1 to infinity of, so the very first term of this inner summation will be the case when m equals n. So in other words, we have 1 over n cubed and then plus the sum m equals 1 n plus 1 to infinity of 1 over m squared n. So we've got something like that going on. So notice that's going to give me the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed if I split these guys up plus this double sum n equals 1 to infinity and then m equals n plus 1 to infinity of 1 over um, m squared times n. But notice this term right here is just the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3. So this thing came out to play already. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is, well, first of all, notice that this is the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3, just like I said. And then uh, the next thing that I want to do is re-index here. So I'm going to re-index in a way that m is going to be replaced with m plus n. Which means um, my bounds will go from m equals uh, 1 to infinity instead of m equals n plus 1 to infinity. So that'll be nice. So uh, now let's write that down. So this is going to be the zeta function evaluated at 3, like I just said. And then uh, now we're going to have plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity, and then the sum m equals 1 to infinity of 1 over m plus n squared times n. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board, bring this to the top, and then we're actually pretty close to being done. Okay, so on the previous board, we left off at this spot. So we've got this sum from m equals 1 to infinity of the mth harmonic number over m squared is equal to uh, the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3 and then this double sum. So n equals 1 to infinity, m equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n times m plus n squared. Now, the next thing that I want to notice, it's a really nice trick, is that this object right here, here is symmetric under switching M and N. So I'll just write that in the following way. So what, what I mean there is that um, M and N are playing the same role in that sum. So what that tells me is I can actually replace that with uh, I can replace m and n and I'll get the same value. But what I want to do is I want to add this sum to itself. But if I add the sum to itself, I get twice the sum, but I can counteract that by taking one half. So I'll take one half of this sum added to itself. But in one version of the sum, I will replace m with n, which again will not change the value because m and n are symmetric in this case. So that's going to be 1 over n, m plus n quantity squared, 1 over m, m plus n quantity squared. Again, that's from this symmetrization. I can add those guys together um, pretty easily. It's easy to find a common denominator, and that's going to give me one half the sum n equals 1 to infinity, the sum m equals 1 to infinity of m plus n over mn m plus n squared. So notice I need to multiply by m over m here and n over n here, so that's how I get this quantity. But notice uh, that guy's really easy to simplify. I can just like erase the squared in the denominator and that's going to cancel this thing down in the numerator into one. So from here, what I want to do is a partial fraction decomposition on this term. So let's just notice what that is. So if I do a partial fraction decomposition, like from calculus class, um, we'll get the following. So we'll have a one over n squared out front. So I won't work through all the details, I'll just tell you what you get, and then 1 over m minus 1 over m plus n. Okay, great. So uh, let's 
write that into our sum. So I have the zeta function evaluated at three plus one half times the sum n equals one to infinity. And then I'm gonna bring this one over n squared out um, because that doesn't depend on m. And then my inner sum is gonna be the sum m equals one to infinity of one over m minus one over m plus n. Now the next thing to notice is that this sum right here is a telescoping sum. So notice we definitely get all of the terms 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 all the way up to 1 over n. But the 1 over n plus 1 term is going to be canceled out by this. Because notice if we plug m equals 1 into this, we get 1 over n plus 1. But that is negative. So this thing telescopes to, and what does it telescope to? The nth harmonic number. So what that tells us is that here we have, this is going to be the sum, the uh, zeta function evaluated at 3 plus 1 half the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the nth harmonic number over n squared. So now let's look at the left hand side and the right hand side and we'll notice that we're pretty much done. I'll clean up the board and then we'll do the last final steps. So on the previous board we got to this point. We have this sum of the nth harmonic number over m squared is the zeta function evaluated at 3 of 1 half the same sum with m replaced with n. But obviously those are just dummy indices of summation. So um, what I can do is I can just change all of the m's here to n's and these two sums on either side look exactly the same. So notice I can subtract this sum from both sides um, and that's going to give me one half the sum n equals one to infinity of the nth harmonic number over n squared equals the Riemann zeta function evaluated at three. But that tells me that the sum n equals one to infinity of hn over n squared um, is equal to twice the Riemann zeta function evaluated at three. But then, um, let's recall doing the same steps that we did at the beginning of this video, that we can replace this sum of the n minus first harmonic number over n squared as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the nth harmonic number over n squared minus 1 over n cubed. Okay. Good, but then that gives us twice the zeta function evaluated at three minus the zeta function evaluated at three, which is obviously the zeta function evaluated at three, which is exactly what we need, which closes the hole that we left in this previous video. Now we're done.